Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's threat snapshot on DFS Course. So this is a pretty cool tool that was open sourced and released to the community a little over a week ago um, by security researcher WhoMI001, Philip Dragovic. And if you've been following Snap Attack and these threat snapshots, um, this attack chain is going to look pretty similar to the Petit Potam uh, vulnerability that we discussed a few weeks ago. And in reality, it should. Um, they fall under the same family of attacks. Um, this is an NTLM relay attack. Uh, as this name implies, DFS coerce. This one is targeting Microsoft's distributed file system. And at the heart, they're doing something very similar. So as an attacker, if I can um, you know, man in the middle and intercept that authentication request to the DFS service, I can then relay that attack to another service, um, in this case, Active Directory Certificate Services. And from there, the kill chains between those two are very similar. Um, this one is gonna use a Kerberos ticket granting ticket to authenticate as, again, a, a domain account, domain machine account, or uh, domain administrator. And again, this kill chain, similar Petit Patam, is you know, chaining that authentication relay together to ultimately go from a domain user to a domain administrator here. Uh, sounds a lot more complicated than it is. Um, promise you it's pretty straightforward. Um, let's take an actual look at what this attack looks like in our platform. So we've got two VMs here. We've got the Windows Victim Machine. Again, this is a domain controller uh, running Active Directory Certificate Services and the DFS service. Um, we're going to actually take a look and watch this attack from the Linux Attacker Machine. Uh, this is definitely where all the interesting stuff is going on. And there's really two pieces to this attack. Um, so the DFS coerce Python script doesn't have anything to do the relaying portion. So you're going to have to use a tool like Responder, or in our case here, we're using Impacket's NTLM RelayX. So we're going to set that up, and that's going to do really the heavy lifting for the relay portion of this attack. Uh, skipping ahead a little bit in the video, you're just going to see us configuring the DFS coerce command. So we've got username, we've got the domain name the IP address of the domain controller, the um, IP address of our attacker machine, which we're going to relay to. And again, we need a valid account. Um, that account doesn't actually have to have permission to use this service. Um, as you can see here, we get this access denied error, which almost makes it look like the attack didn't succeed. Um, but we do see here, um, we do have that machine account for the DC. So the relay attack portion does succeed. And good news is from a threat hunting and detection side, this is actually quite a detectable attack. A um, couple of different ways that we can look at it. So um, in true snap attack fashion, uh, how do I hunt for this? How do I detect? How do I prevent this attack? So a couple of ways here, um, taking a look at this one here, this is detecting connections to the, in, the I'm sorry, the net DFS pipe associated with this DFS course attack. So this is gonna be a, a security event, a 5145. And again, you're gonna be looking for that relative target name of NetDFS. Again, you may wanna take a look and see what the IP address says. Um, and you know that would be where you would take a look. Probably not something that you would want to alert on, but definitely good for threat hunting. Um, another thing I do wanna give a shout out to Praetorian here. Um, they have a really nice blog post on um, detecting DFS course. and. You know, we talk at Snap Attack a lot about robustness, and this is one of those areas where I think they did a really good job. Um, you know, as the researcher mentions, there's two different methods that you can force this authentication, but the POC that they released is only doing the first one here and not this latter. So uh, Praetorian took it upon themselves to modify that exploit here, just as, again, any other attacker could, to do that second chain. Um, and again, their recommendations here are taking a look at two different event codes, um, 515 and 514 within this um, Microsoft Windows uh, DSFN server admin event log type. Um, and again, this is looking for the creation of a DFS namespace or the removal. Um, again, depending on which you know API call you're triggering in here. Um, like you said, both of these would work for this. So. Again, this is something that we can take a look at in the Snap Attack platform. Again, we can see that this event log is you know, captured. And again, this is just another way that you can take a look at that um, if you're capturing those event logs on the domain controller. Obviously, again, mitigation prevention is gonna be the best way to do this. Um, again, this is gonna look very similar to Petit Patam. Um, indeed, this was actually Microsoft's response here based on that um, 
you know, attack. However, this is that NTLM relay attack. So under the hood, the you know, mitigations are going to be the same. Um, again, I'll post this in the, the uh, text of the video here, but you want to use EPA, the extended protection uh, for authentication, um, as the primary mitigation. Or again, you can follow their steps to actually go ahead and disable it in TLM authentication where it's possible. Again, sometimes that's used in a network that's you know obviously widely used for other authentication, but it's really just being able to relay that um, that authentication mechanism where um, being able to disable that is, is ideal. So anyways, uh, that's our snapshot for this week. It is a weekly series, so please like, subscribe, follow us, and we'll see you next week.